Hello, this is Ron Baker. Welcome to Empowered at Last. Today we're going to do one of my favorite things, which is to answer some of the questions that you all have been sending in. I love it when you guys actually become proactive in this conversation and that you reach out to me and let me know exactly what is important to you. That way, I know that I am touching specific people and it gives me a feeling like I have a finger on the pulse of what's going on, which I adore. So today, we're going to start out with an astrological question. I just did a talk on Astrology Hub. I adore astrology. I do not happen to be a professional astrologer. However, because I have been interested in understanding life and how it works, I put, I, my gosh, I studied with teachers all over the world and have had access to so much inner awakening and teaching and have taught thousands of people around the world, I have learned so dang much about self that we all share, about the three potentials of self, and about life and how it works more fully in all of this exploration. In recent years, I added astrology to this and it confirmed everything that I was already discovering from other perspectives. So whether you are a major astrology buff or not, you might find it remarkable to reach out to a really wonderful astrologer who can read your natal chart. What does that mean? It's where the planets were when you were born. I was amazed when I had my first one done maybe five years ago and discovered all of the core elements of my soul setup of this lifetime were right there. My particular gifts, my particular interests, my particular challenges. I often talk about the challenge I had with my father growing up. And so it so happens that in my very first house, there are 12 houses that read the whole chart. My first house is the house of self. And in my first house, I happen to have Jupiter and Saturn. No worries if you're not into astrology, you'll understand the essence of the challenge here. That's the son and the father energy in a powerful way. And my identity as self was so colored by the challenges of father-son energy. And yet, the opportunity to face those challenges and learn what it was trying to teach me is what led me to become a nurturing father presence to thousands of people around the world. So all of that was right there in my natal chart. Other things as well. I'm not going to take so much time to tell you about my particular chart, only to say that if you haven't explored astrology, a great place for you to go to be exposed to a broad array of astrologers is called Astrology Hub, H-U-B. So go and look that up. Amanda Pua Walsh is the, the mastermind behind that particular, particular gathering of astrologers. And I happened to speak in a summit recently for Astrology Hub. So this first question comes from one of those people who came to me from Astrology Hub. And they said, I'm not really cl clear about retrograde planets, what that means, and how it impacts my life. And so, let's explore that a little bit. It will apply to all of you, even if you're not into astrology. Basically, the way Western astrology works is we look from the perspective of the Earth. Even though the Earth goes around the Sun, and life operates in our particular solar system with the sun at the center, we look at all of the movements around the earth. So as all the planets are dancing around, 
where is Jupiter? Where is Saturn? Where is the moon? Where is the sun in relationship to the earth? Sometimes we are moving together and it moves in a way that encourages us energetically forward with particular issues, whether it be relationships or career or money or self or the depths of the subconscious. It encourages us forward to look at new territory, to go, okay, now that I've reached this stage in my life, where am I in my relationships? Then there are other times when the planet is moving, when the earth is moving in one direction and because of the location of other planets, it looks like they are moving backward. This is called a planet in retrograde. It doesn't mean that planet is moving backwards, but it is creating a friction that's not encouraging us and moving in the same direction we're moving in. And so what it ends up doing, it ends up moving that planet over some territory it just covered in our charts. So let's just stick with the example of relationships. Let's say it is moving through those energies. I'm not going to go into more specific houses and things. Let's just stick with this relationship focus. It's moving us to find out where we are in relationships. And then the planet that is moving there seems to stand still in relationship to the Earth. And then it moves back across the same territory it was just covering. This is called retrograde. What happens? What is the impact? That's more important than necessarily understanding the movements of the planets in the heavens. How does it impact you and me? Ultimately, if I've just moved through some experiences, retrograde gives me the chance to reevaluate what I just moved through. Let's make it overly simple. Let's just say I moved through this in three months. The retrograde gives me a chance to look back over what I just learned or didn't necessarily learn in those three months, re-evaluating my relationship, re-evaluating whatever it is focused on, but in the example we're using, relationship. So I go back, like it or not, and I re-evaluate. Now, if I'm someone who is consciously looking at myself, looking at my life, looking at these various arenas of my life, it's going to become a great opportunity for me to re-evaluate because then it's going to move again across the same territory. If I use the retrograde as an opportunity to re-evaluate, then I get a chance to move across it again. I can make all kinds of adjustments and enhancements that I decide will set me and the others in my life up better and better. A retrograde is a stunning opportunity for that re-evaluation. However, if I was in resistance the first time I was moving through this new territory and then the movement of planets creates a friction that says you need to look, you need to look, you need to look and I go into even deeper resistance, then I'm going to go into a very disempowered perspective and think that retrograde is something happening to me in a negative way. It is not. <laughs> it is simply my own resistance that creates the greater friction. Friction is not fun. Friction creates pain. Friction creates shutdown. It's a diminishing energy. Now it's serving you, serving me. It's showing me where I'm in friction, which says, you really, really need to look. 
and then it gets deeper and deeper if I don't look. This is the acceleration of life trying to dance with you and me to get our attention to say anywhere you're not flowing, anywhere you're not in life in a healthy relationship, willing, looking forward, becoming connected to, learning from, anywhere we're not in that healthy relationship, we're already in a friction. Then you add the movement of planets across that, creating even more friction. Ah, this is why people go, I don't like retrogrades. Well, if we just had some clear education, like I hope you perceive you just got, then it can become a really empowered learning and deepening time. Then when you move forward again, it feels better than ever deeper, more empowered. It inspires you to trust your own capacity to impact your own life. All of that is happening whether someone is conscious or not. It will help you understand the stages and phases of life and that as all of these planetary energies move over the course of time, they are covering all 12 facets of self that we need to nurture and deepen. And every time we do a pass on that level of self, it's an opportunity to continue growing into more and more and more of our potential. This is how cycles work. Some of them are short, like the sun and the moon, day and night, just from the earth turning around in a 24-hour period, all the way up to huge cycles of planets that take, for instance, 250 years to move all the way around the sun. So, cycles and retrograde. I hope that that helps you understand all of it is there to serve you. All of it is there to encourage you to connect to self, to get to know self, to respond and deepen self. As always, if you need more clues and tools how to do that effectively, please reach out to me. So I'm gonna take one more question today. This says, does the awakening that's happening on the planet affect the physical and emotional bodies? Yes, yes, and yes. So now let's explain. What is the awakening that's happening on the planet? In the last couple of weeks, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been doing some talk about the soul, getting to know the impact that our soul has on us. It is a part of our consciousness from the time we're born. But just like you couldn't say to a six-year-old, there's an adult held inside you. That wouldn't make much sense to a six-year-old. And yet, now that you're an adult, you know that an adult level of consciousness was always inside you, waiting for you to grow through the stages that would allow you to take advantage of tapping those potentials. The soul is the same. I now say to you, there's a soul inside you. It's not some religious or amorphous or vague term. It is a very real depth of sacred, powerful potential that is held inside each one of us. And yet, just like the adult was in the background when we were children, and much of the adult potential is still in the background for those who are still ruled mostly by wounded child consciousness, fear, shame, judgment, defense, separation, opposition, etc. Any one of these facets I could go into for hours. So it's very challenging for me to just plant a little seed and move on. But we have a specific question on the table. What is awakening? Awakening is the acceleration of energy that is happening right now on the planet that is creating a pressure 
for us to expand beyond what we've known before. Well, any part of you that is in fear, shame, and judgment from the wounded child center of your being is going to go into resistance. What did we just talk about with retrograde planets? It will create resistance to movement and change and expansion. As much as we say, I would love more, more money, I'd love more intimacy, I'd love more fulfillment. Well, guess what? All that's possible, but it requires that you clear, that you nurture, that you learn how to invest in self so that you clear the passageway for the energies to move through you so that you can move into this awakening without also deepening your resistance and friction. Hopefully it's becoming clear why I chose to put these two questions together in the same episode. Whether we're looking at the planets or whether we're looking inside, fear, shame, and judgment, which is what we learned if we did not get nine distinct levels of nurturing when we were young, or if we have not learned, now as adults, how to discover what those nine levels of nurturing are and how to provide them for ourselves, which is what we were always meant to do, even if we got them from mommy and daddy to begin with. We were always intended to become the source and the authority in our own lives. If we're not aware of that, practicing those things, then we likely have friction of fear, shame, and judgment. And though we say we'd love to move forward into more, we end up more ruled by the hard drive of the computer, which is the subconscious mind, which is programmed initially in the first eight years of our lives in very powerful ways. So does awakening affect our physical and emotional bodies? Yes. It either affects it by raising the energy, flowing with greater potential than ever before, and you feel lighter, more vital, more energized physically, or if you're in greater resistance, unconscious or consciously, then you feel more pressure, more anxiety, more fear, shame, and judgment, and as the energies accelerate, it's like more water coming down a river. If you're going with the flow of the river of life, then it can become even more exciting into more potential and more depths and more heights. Let's just leave it in that metaphor. Or if you are attempting to remain in the same limited comfort zone, swimming against the current of life, which would love to take you into more and more and more of yourself, then you create much greater friction and havoc in your physical and emotional bodies as greater amounts of energy start to flow through you. This is indeed what is happening on the planet for every single person. It doesn't matter whether you are exploring metaphysics. It doesn't matter if you are going to every workshop you can get your hands on. This energetic acceleration is happening on the planet and it will either create an awakening unlike anything you've ever known into much more fulfillment than you've ever known by percentages or it will create by percentages bigger and bigger shutdown, an acceleration of fear, shame, and judgment, and friction. There's no such thing as just standing still. Life is movement. It is entirely possible for you to expand and grow and blossom into more of you. So as always, I'm going to say reach out. I would love to help. We all need tools and we need clarity. 
We need a process for approaching life that will allow us into the more that so many people are saying they want. So I'm going to close this week with choose well, live fully, and by all means, be good to you.